Hey you, stop that right now. Ooh, me? Yes, you, software developer slash DevOps person. What's that thing you're holding? It's a pointing device called a mouse. When I move it, the little arrow on the screen moves and I can select things. <laughs> Did you code that yourself? The mouse? It's a physical entity. You cannot code it. Nonsense. Everything in this world was coded by somebody at some point in the past. Okay. Anyway, that pointing device might work for one of those online shooting games. But you're meant to be coding, not pointing. Uh, how can I code without a mouse, though? Well, you know the keyboard, the thing you use to do the codey part of your coding? Yeah. Well, you can use that to do the not so codey part of your coding as well, like building your code, running your code, switching windows, opening files, and also googling every single problem that you come across throughout the day. But I only have 104 keys on my keyboard, and I need all of those keys for coding. How can I do all those other things? Well, there's a keyboard shortcut for everything these days. Fine, but do real people actually code like this? Absolutely. Beyond the world of a programmer that's slowly clicking between tabs in their IDE, there's a shadow world of highly effective individuals that neither move their left hand nor their right hand from the keyboard ever. Amazing, but what happens when they need to scratch their ass? Fear not, there's a keyboard shortcut for this as well. Fantastic. Tell me more. Well, these individuals not only benefit from time saved by reduced keyboard to mouse hand motion latency, but keyboard shortcuts get you where you need to go a lot quicker. I mean, even your mum uses Control C for copying text, right? Uh, how did you know? It doesn't matter. What's important now is for you to put away your mouse and embrace the keyboard. This will require a lot of discipline, but the rewards will be plenty. Are you ready to join me on this journey? Hi, it's Tom Gregory here, and while it's probably true that I do need to get out more, it's also true that we could all benefit by using our mouses, uh, I mean mice, less. And keyboard shortcuts can really benefit anyone that's coding at any level, whether you've just started coding or you're a seasoned pro. And here I've got three tips for you, which are things that you want to think about when you're embarking your journey to improve your coding productivity by using the keyboard more. And tip number one here is to lock up your mouse. And I am being deadly serious here. And this is actually a technique that I used myself when I really stepped up my game to learn all the IDE shortcuts. I put the mouse in the drawer and that way it really stops the temptation of just automatically reaching out for the mouse. And you'll find yourself reaching out and it's not there. And you're going to have to overcome that by you'll either have to remember what the shortcut is or you'll have to Google it. And the important thing here is that it's gonna absolutely force you to use your keyboard. I'm sorry, okay? You're just too clickable. And I challenge you to try this technique out yourself. So perhaps one morning or afternoon, you can put your mouse away or you can give your mouse to a colleague and tell them not to give it back to you until the next day. And this is really gonna force you to use the keyboard. And in terms of knowing what keyboard shortcuts to use, well, you can look this up up front or you can also use Google. Well, how can you use Google without the mouse as well? Well, it's actually easier than you might think. And in fact, there's a plugin that I'm going to link to in the description called Vimium that allows you to completely navigate a web page using the keyboard only. And the second point here is to learn to touch type. And it's probably obvious, but if you can touch type, then if you've got to do a keyboard shortcut that is two or three characters, it's gonna be a lot easier if you can use all of your fingers rather than trying to do a three character shortcut when you're only using two fingers. And the other benefit, of course, is that you're gonna be looking at the screen constantly and you're not gonna have this back and forth of switching between looking at the screen and the keyboard and that's gonna increase your productivity. Third point here is to be mindful that this process is going to take some time and at the start it may be a little bit tricky as you push through that barrier of learning all these keyboard shortcuts but after a few weeks I'm sure that you're going to pick up all these shortcuts and you'll realize that actually you know a load of new shortcuts and you're actually being more productive than before when you were using the mouse. 
And there probably is an exception to this rule, and that is when you're doing front-end coding. And I mostly do back-end development, so it allows me to use the keyboard as much as possible. But if you're doing front-end coding, then you're going to be wanting to use the mouse as this simulates best how your users are interacting with your front end on your desktop application or website. But that doesn't mean that you can't have a clear distinction between when you're in your coding mode and when you're in your testing mode. And when you're in your coding mode, you can be strict to say, I'm just gonna use the keyboard at this point because that's more productive. And if you're already trying to use more keyboard shortcuts, then let me know in the comments what's the most tricky thing that you've found so far. And if you do want to learn what shortcuts you can use in the IntelliJ IDEA IDE, then check out this video, which is all about the top 15 shortcuts in IntelliJ IDEA. Otherwise, thanks a lot for watching this video, and I hope to see you next time on Tom Gregory Tech. Good night, Mousy. I promise I won't click on you anymore.